Um, there's a lot of uh, companies that are playing today with uh, hydrogen ice engines uh, because it's one dimension ahead of, for example, a methane engine, right? Methane is a hydrogen enriched gas. And so it's not that hard to go to hydrogen ice. Is that the same thing to go from CNG to a compressed bio gas engine? Or are we expecting long capex cycles for people making ice engines to be able to accommodate multi-fuel? So there will be some changes, correct? Because right now we are looking CNG to go as a substitute because we also again depend on gas imports to subsidize, correct? CNG typically is used for our mass transportation. Mm, rickshaws and buses. And correct. Yeah. So idea is let's replace some of what we import with some of it what we can do domestically. Yes. Uh, every ton we d d produce domestically saves a ton of imports from us, correct? It's a foreign exchange which we save. So I think our idea of getting 5 and 10 and 15 percent in the near future is what we are looking for because as the industry grows, let's say if we are growing at 4 and 5 percent a year on year, our import will also grow 4 and 5 percent per year. But if that import substitutes come from our own sources, we do see that mass transportation will accept more and more. Uh, it's interesting at one point, Gadkari was, Mr. Gadkari was, was saying that uh, he was worried at one point whether the CNG transition will take off because of the pricing that happened. Luckily, industry put faith in CNG and today we could see uh, a lot of it. Happen. We call it always a transition fuel. The gas will always be a transition fuel, but transition is still another next 20 years or so. So we do see that it will have its space. CNG, especially when it comes from bio sources, it does act as uh, a green fuel it does help us in bringing our carbon footprint down. So definitely we will see that segment developing.